Elon Musk updates his Starship timeline. Polaris Dawn begins training for SpaceX's first spacewalk. Another Starlink launch is just moments away. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Starship Booster 7 testing continues at the southern tip of Texas. On Wednesday, the first stage underwent its third overall full fill-up cryo test, and once again, on the face of it, all appeared nominal. Lab Padre even granted us an up-close view of the booster's quick disconnect in action. This clip is in real time. This launch table QD supplies boosters with liquid oxygen and electricity as it sits on the pad and will quickly disconnect at launch. Booster 7 has since been hooked up to a crane in preparation for transport, possibly back to the high bay for a Raptor installation. Also on Wednesday, Starship 20 was relocated from the launch site to the Rocket Garden, where Starships go to watch the action like the rest of us. Nearby, SN16 was hooked up to the gantry crane of the new High Bay 2, formerly known as the Wide Bay, to test the new equipment. And next door to that, the future Starship factory building has begun receiving skin on its skeleton. Local photographer Starship Gazer getting all up in that action. On Tuesday, Elon sat down for an interview with a bloke from the Financial Times and provided his latest take on the timeline for Starship's upcoming orbital flight. We're making a lot of progress with Starship. We will hopefully have our first launch attempt uh, this summer, um, or basically next, next two or three months. Um, and we're building up the, the, we've got a factory for Starship, so there's a whole bunch of Starships coming behind the one that will attempt launch uh, soon. So if that one doesn't work, we have, um, we'll have many more behind that, and we're continuously improving the design. He also updated his expectations for the first Mars missions. I think, I think we're, we should be able to, I don't know, maybe get Starship to Mars uh, uncrewed in um, three to five years, um, and then I think if, if that's successful, then we may be able to send a crewed mission to Mars uh, before the end of the decade. That may seem like ways away, but exciting stuff will be happening as we wait. Polaris Dawn Commander Jared Isaacman announced that his crew will begin their extravehicular activity training this month. According to Isaacman, the training will include time in the pool, as well as time being dangled by suspension lines during capsule egress simulations. Their new EVA suits are currently being built by SpaceX with input from NASA, but will be much slimmer than what astronauts currently use outside the space station since they'll be utilizing umbilical lines instead of their own dedicated atmosphere. In fact, Jared thinks it will look more like the IVA suit SpaceX already uses, but with a new visor, new seals, and other features to allow joint mobility. Polaris Dawn will be the first of three missions commanded by Isaacman to help SpaceX prepare for manned Starship missions. Concerning other Starlink news, SpaceX released a map of their current service availability. Starlink is now operational for 32 countries, including Canada. After months of delays caused by the conflict in Ukraine, Quebec has reached an agreement with SpaceX to provide some 10,000 underserved Quebecian homes with Starlink service. For the other hundreds of thousands of households, fiber optic will remain their means to surf the web, dude which is actually about $40 or loonies cheaper than Starlink per month. I don't know what you silly Canadian geese call money. But thanks to the socialist redistribution of wealth and internet speeds, those receiving Starlink won't have to pay the difference between the two services. Or even for the terminals themselves, because the government is going to pay for it. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Government pays for nothing, ever. You, the taxpayers, will pay for it. Even those of you who would have preferred to keep your tax dollars to use them where you would find them more useful. Even the taxpayers still using fiber optic will have to pay for their neighbors much faster Starlink service. And so you may be thinking to yourself, doesn't this create its own problem? Well sure, but don't you worry. Solving problems before figuring out solutions is what bureaucrats do. SpaceX will be placing more satellites in their constellation just hours from now. If you'd like a viewing buddy, I'll be streaming it live on the tubes. So be sure to head over there as soon as we're done here. Hurry up and wait. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. For the first time in history, the Event Horizon Telescope has managed to show humanity the black hole that was theorized to exist at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, known as Sagittarius A. Are you ready to see it? Here. We. Go. Yay! That's super disappointing. But seriously, to pull off this nearsighted picture of a massive something that is the absence of everything, except gravity I guess, is actually pretty impressive and took years of image refining to pull off. 
VHT is actually composed of many radio telescopes around the world, essentially turning Earth into one big telescope array, capable of seeing through all the galactic gas and dust that resides between us and the center of our galaxy about 27,000 light years away. Well, that's all for this one. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to have a nominal weekend and be seeing you soon for Starlink 46. Until that time, Godspeed.